At this point, we all know that tech companies collect our data and even sell it to advertisers. That's how they make money. That's not what this video is about. You might be surprised here that there are more secret ways that tech companies track you online. So what if I told you companies are tracking your behavior on sites down to your mouse movements? Also, if someone on the other side wanted to, they could in theory see everything you did on a page, even if you weren't logged in. So in this video, we're going to be diving into how and why companies do this. Let me start by just giving myself a little bit of credibility. I'm a software engineer who used to work at one of the largest tech companies out there. And I'll be diving into a lot more topics like this in the future. So vote with your thumb if you want more of this content. So let's get into this. How is this tracking actually happening? Well, let's start with the obvious things. If you create an account on any site, let's just say Facebook, you're making a user record for yourself in a database. So everything you upload to Facebook, everything you do is going to be stored uh, tied to this record. And this should not really come as a surprise. You're sending this data by filling out forms or literally uploading an image. It's stuff that you put in. But you don't actually have to submit a form for companies to see what you're doing. You might not know that even before you make an account, sites are able to track you. At some point, you've definitely seen that accept cookies message. And well, this is what it's for. A cookie is just a unique identifier that represents you and it's stored in your browser. So everything you do will be tied to this cookie ID. That is, unless you manually delete it. Then if you do ever create an account in the future, your account data will be merged with this cookie data. What are they actually tracking though? Well, probably more than you might think. Of course, the pages you load, but also everything down from how you scroll around, what you click, and where you even move your mouse. The crazy part is this isn't even hard to do. Everything from mouse click to scrolling and all the events I just mentioned are just kind of like neurons firing in the browser. So with some simple JavaScript code, and I mean really simple, you can capture any of these browser events and save them, sending them off to a company's analytics server for later use. Now the event is usually represented as what's called a log. So it's just some metadata about the event, generally including a timestamp and a unique user ID or UUID that would be assigned to either your account or your cookie. Now, as you can imagine, there are thousands of these events, maybe even tens of thousands per user. So it takes some pretty incredible processing power and a large amount of space for uh, this data on large sites. Now, tracking mouse movement seems ridiculous. So why would companies even care about this? It's true, these events in aggregate on any site are pretty much just noise. There's so many of them firing every second for people all over the world. But you can organize them and filter them down to create meaningful insights. And now we're getting a bit into the realm of data science. Let's back up and just talk about how a tech company works. This is a very interesting organism. What I believe a lot of people think, and I can understand why, is why does a company like Facebook need to employ thousands of people just to keep it running? Because the site doesn't look that different from a few years ago. So why is it such an expensive operation? Well, part of the truth is that big companies employ all these people because they're always testing new features and improving current ones. So the question is, how do you measure what a good feature or a product is? Well, I'll give you a hint. They don't ask people. And the answer is a huge stream of user analytics data. The data doesn't lie. By aggregating and filtering the data, you can see the patterns and measure how effective or in some cases addictive things are. One way this is done is via A-B testing. It's a very simple example. You make two of the exact same page with a different button color, and then you see which one gets a better percentage of clicks. Another insight that can be created from user data is a heat map. Where do users move their mouse, scroll, and 
eventually stop reading your page. All of this can be reconstructed when you take the aggregate of user events across a huge number of people. You'd create an overlay of heat with red being the most visited areas of the page and then uh, maybe no color on areas that people never visit. So you can see where people fall off and at that part of your page, you can adjust it and improve it to see what works. The crazy part is even if you don't understand why this is happening, the data will tell you that something needs adjusting. So you can tweak it over and over until you get the result you're looking for. Now, when you combine the volume of data you're getting from these user events and the fact that it is a pure representation of behavior, the ability to filter and sort this data, well, that's incredibly powerful. It's also a bit unsettling, but probably not in the way you think. Yes, the events are still tied to you as an individual, so there is a privacy concern because yes, in theory, a company insider could recreate everything you did from your event records. So in doing this, they could paint an entire picture of what you've been up to down to how you've been using your mouse, but that shouldn't bother you as much as this. With these insights and testing capabilities for new features, companies are able to create super potent products as a result of this, perfecting them over years and even make them addictive in ways they don't understand. In fact, there's an entire book written on this called Hooked. The thing is, most companies look at the data purely objectively. The user data is just that data. It's only data. Why you have to be mad? But when you think of it this way, everything you do on a service is being pushed into a system to create more of those actions you're taking. And then more of those actions get pushed back into the system. It's like a continuous loop of addiction. <laughs> so I would say that's part of the reason social media has become so addictive. And we haven't even mentioned how machine learning and AI plays into this, but that would be an entire different video. Now you may be wondering what sites are doing this. Well, first of all, any site that uses Stripe payment processing. I recently came across this article, which was kind of the inspiration for this video. And it turns out that by simply injecting some JavaScript code into apps, which is done to load Stripe on the page, Stripe can send your event data to its own servers. Remember when I said capturing the events was easy? Well, it is really easy. I don't want to bash Stripe. It's a great service. And it's especially not fair because pretty much every site out there that wants to be competitive is collecting this data. When your competitors are doing it, using data to its full effect, just to stay even, you have to collect data to see where your own pages could be improved. Anyway, this is a whole topic that could have a book written on it. There are books written on it. But um, that's a quick summary of how companies capture and some of the ways they use your data. If you found this interesting, well, maybe you should get into data science. Unnerving? Well, welcome to 2020. And any of the above, please subscribe for more videos like this.